What's up guys, this is Sean and welcome to another episode of the e Heng Podcast And uh, we will read an email from Dennis Wong Hey Sean, I'm Dennis from NYC and in my late 40s I'm planning to retire in 2-3 to three years time back in Malaysia, originally from KL I have a saving of about 300,000 or 3 million 300 or it's one zero away So I think it's 3 million and looking to invest on rental apartments so that I could enjoy the income on rental only. I prefer to invest on multiple medium cost apartments, the more the merrier. Four to five units, I don't know. What's your take on this? All strictly on rental only as I have already owned a guarded double story house in Pujong, currently rented out and another single story in SS3 which my parents is living right now. What's the current property market like? Should I buy now into the new projects which will be ready in two to three years time? Or wait till I come back and get the ones that's already there. I know KL Center is very high on rental returns but also very expensive to own. Do you prefer all properties in the same area or a more diverse place? And which area do you prefer? I would like to know if you, some developers are better compared to the others. If so, can you recommend some to me as I have left for very long? Bear in mind that I don't have any credit in financial in Malaysia. All I have is cash and a Malaysian passport. <laughs> Will it be too high profile to make several purchases in one time? I'm looking forward to your expertise, advice and start my plan right away. I thank you very much and appreciate for all info. Dennis Wow. Okay, so first of all, it has been a dream like, to actually go to New York City because I think one of my heroes is actually Casey Neistat. And yeah, I just love all of his work and my work is heavily influenced by him. Okay, that enough said. Thank you very much again for the email. And let's get to it. Like. So number one, do you invest in multiple medium courses or do you just go for like high ends? Like? I would say medium cost doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be high rental. And high cost doesn't mean it's going to be low rental as well. So I would suggest to go in accordance to where the development is. Lah. So for example, like TRX is coming, right? So you better keep an eye around in TRX where you have a lot of new upcoming places, right? Then if you look into highways, there's an episode where I mentioned all about highways and right? then five new highways where the development that is adjacent to the outlet from the highway that will also benefit from it or you can always go to the very famous established townships like Tesa Park City, Mong Kiara, like Bangsa and things like that right so those areas are generally fine but uh, I would suggest to actually have a baseline which means what's the base ROI that you would like to have so that will actually be helpful also if you were to engage an agent to actually shop for you right and let's say for 3 million maybe I would suggest to go for a Mon Kiara and a Desa Park City which is like pretty awesome already because these are areas where the rental generally is very very stable I think that's also something that you need to decide whether you want stability predictability or you want like suddenly you make a lot of money <laughs> when, we, when we hunt properties in accordance to news right like for those who hunt for Bana Malaysia initially or that wants to buy nearby Bana Malaysia or got burned just because that Bana Malaysia will require another 10 20 years just to build up so that's something to also take note lah. so I would suggest since you have the benefit of cash right I would suggest you to go for sub sales and you can actually predict based on the rental income so it means right you can afford certainty or you can also mix it up. Like, so I would always want to diversify where I want to buy one in Mong Kiara, one in Desa Park City, one in Bangsa. That also includes buying some which are sub sale and buying some that are new, right? But new usually will have more premium and you seriously need a lot more data to justify your purchase. For example, like the one that I was buying, the amount of work just to justify one purchase is tremendous and a lot of people just don't take that effort into account. So they think like, oh, it looks good, then I buy. So based on recommendations, right, I'll suggest some of my friends to you where they are agents and sometimes they may also want to represent you. Just because I don't have the luxury of time to actually accompany you and go ding, email ding dong ding dong with you. Lah. I wish maybe in the future I can actually help foreign Malaysians right or foreign buyers to actually shop around represent them and buy property wow, that's the life right the last concern would be you buying cash straight yes it's actually a little bit high profile so they will actually check your income so the source of money first is the concern so no matter how much you bring back right it's not about taxing yet but the source so you need to actually justify and things like that then number two when you actually buy up a lot and when you want to exit, this is a next level concern. When you want to exit, right? 
usually we will need to pay RBGT but then when the income tax office actually comes they may look at you a you know how to play the game you are operating a property investment business therefore I will slap you with 24% income tax instead of the usual 15 to 5% RPGT tax so that is something to be cautious of as well when you want to exit in the future but not now I think it's a good time for you uh, because currency difference you or USD is pretty strong here and then developers are throwing a lot and in my opinion as well I think Malaysia is in a very very good place right now in terms of investment because if you look into Hong Kong right everything is still politically they have issues then if you look into US as well so currently racial thing and COVID right so all those actually do effect and all their money their investment funds right needs to go somewhere and Southeast Asia seems to be very promising even IMF recognized Malaysia being very effective in our healthcare right so like our COVID situation somewhat is already under control and our business are starting to come back already so recovery rate is going to be tremendous in Malaysia and and I think it's a very, very good time to come back actually. So welcome back. Maybe we can go eat wonton mee again. <laughs> so in conclusion, uh, high price doesn't mean low returns and low price property doesn't mean high return necessarily. But it's still within the medium range. So I would actually say 400 to 800,000 would actually be ideal. Anything above a million, then it's a whole different story because not many people can actually afford a rental of 5,000 just to break even. Okay. Next would be a few questions that you need to ask yourself, which is the base of ROI. So are you a rental ROI person where you want to take rental every month kind of thing? Or are you into a capital appreciation person? So like if you have cash right now, would you want to buy straight up a landed property? Or would you want to go for several apartments and you collect rental? So if you go the latter approach, you need a person to manage them for you. So if you need help on that one, because my company also provide help. So if you need any help, do let me know. And I will actually recommend an agent for you where he actually leads an agency and things like that. Uh, you just deal with him. Then last of all would be buying cash straight. So yes, it will be a bit high profile. I think that's about it, Dennis. Uh, thank you very much for the email and I really appreciate it from all the way from New York, right? So for those who still have any questions regarding real estate, do just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G, T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com or you can just DM me on Instagram, I-H-E-R-N-G. Uh, that's all for today. See you guys on the next one. Ciao.